cheers 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 to you guys um he who goes to bed and goes to bed mellow lives as he ought to and leaves an honest fellow So let's talk about what it is that we're going to be doing today. Specifically, I posted this up previously in chat earlier. If you and I'm going to post it up again, so you guys can follow along if you would like. So, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is called the Boss of the Sock Competition. It is a yearly competition that is hosted by Splunk. If you're unfamiliar with Splunk, welcome to the channel. We talk about it quite a bit. It is an information management tool. A lot of people would call it a sim. It is technically not a sim because I've also seen it utilized for business analytics and um, IT analytics and everything else like that. So, it is... Um, not security specific. It is just an information management tool set. Uh, it will take in logs of whatever type you have, and that can be logistics. It can be literally anything. Um, and it will help you make meaningful use of the data. Now, in that, what I've been providing over there is something called... I don't normally stream on this one with the screen share. Let's make sure I get this right. Ah, yes, I got it right. Okay. Wonderful. So in this, it's called Boss of the Sock, and it allows you to engage and play around with their data set. Now, previously, what I've been doing over on my other stuff on Monday called Jack of All Trades over on Twitch is I have been slowly working through this and trying to build the data set myself to get I'm, I'm getting more back into the hands on type of stuff um, just to keep the wit sharp. Um, having said that, I found out that they have the, so they have right now, they have released up to version three on the, um, that you can download and engage with as far as data sets go. Come June, there is an actual competition again this year for dot .conf 22. I fully intend on part participating in that. And also... I can have a team of up to four. So I have, I have spots for three other people. We can do a live. Well, we can't technically stream the CTF live, but we can do some stuff and have some good times. Um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Having said that, I'm definitely going to practice a little bit with the older, um, older items. And tonight, I wanted to start working through with you guys at the 50 level. Okay, and what is that? Or not the 50 level, but the 50 pointers, the easy ones, the slow balls, the slow curves. Um, so there is a lot of content. When you go into the this boss of the sock, and this is telling me I have two hours left because they give you a four-hour time limit uh, every time you start it up. So in that, um, when you click here, load up. Boss of the Sock version one. And then you're given two scenarios. Scenario one, scenario two. Scenario two is ransomware. Scenario one is website defacement. Okay. I'm going to start tonight. We're going to go over the lower end questions in scenario one. Now, if you're not familiar with the CTF style, okay. So let's let's hit a couple of questions real quick because you guys are you're asking a bunch tonight, and I want to make sure I get to them. I don't know how to phrase the question, just wondering on thoughts since I am taking a class on GRC, which is governance, risk, and compliance. How hard is that to break into uh, cybersecurity with this? Not hard at all. Uh, governance, risk, and compliance, if anything, is actually one of the easier um, easier areas to break into uh, because it's, it's considered more, not to say that it's not cyber, because it is, it's cyber, but you can transition laterally into it from a business perspective 
as somebody that's, you know, just kind of like really into IT and then you come at it from an auditing perspective, um, a good person to talk to is Alexandra, Alexandria San Miguel, Miguel. She's going to kill me messing up her name. Um, a friend of mine, she's been on the channel before. Talk to me after this. I can get you her info. She is director of um, GRC over at Walk the Runway uh, right now. And she's been on uh, our INE show as well. Um, Jordan McGee, how would you handle an internally built web app versus a web app created by a third party in terms of finding web vulnerabilities? Bug bounty programs, uh, plenty of scanners out there. You know, it would be great to talk to for that one in particular. Um, our mod tonight, Mr. F Net Frazier, I would suggest hitting him up. Um, definitely a uh, good person to talk to on the specifics there. Taekwon Gong, how do nation state hackers train and build skills? Practice, practice, practice. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of unfortunate in cybersecurity because all the times you see like everyone just seems to get it right they're on the computer and what you're what hollywood makes look easy all the time is for two reasons one just just because it's hollywood they make everything intentionally look so much easier than it actually is just to move stories along in reality um you know, they don't show the 10,000 hours worth of work that it took to get to that understanding. Also, you have what's called a training pipeline. So when you are in a military or government organization, you generally start by planning your personnel. As personnel management, you're planning per job functionality and need. And then you create a massive repeatable process uh, full of checks and balances that you can run a hundred people through. Okay. So it's not easy to just go, yeah, I'm going to, you know, create this job role or whatever else in the military. It, very explicitly though, when it comes to hacking or um, whatever else you have, if they are military based or government based, you know, based or provided or whatever else, then they've been through that whole training pipeline. Now, if you're talking about nation state as in third party contractors that are popularized through China, Russia, and Iran, specifically, um, you, you just, It's one of those, you just got to train, you got to train, you got to understand, you got to live in it and do it. Um, yeah, it would not surprise me to find out some of the, like whenever they catch these individuals, if you look at their background, you know, sometimes they might have a background from an actual college education and computer science. Sometimes they, you know, sometimes they don't, they've just learned everything that they can and, you know, they're savants at it. You know, it's, everyone's got a story, but what you will find for all of them is that they do it all the time. It's like breathing for them. Um, and they generally don't have to look things up. Well, I won't say they don't have to look things up because there's definitely been instances that we've seen. They do. They have to look things up. They have to go and find things. They make things work. But once you get the anonymity portion down, right? Once you're actually able to get the anonymity portion together, then you can work in on the problem for as long until you get caught. And a lot of times we're seeing also a lot of security postures and not monitoring appropriately. So, uh, Daniel Marquez, how would you deal with the stress on instant response tasks, especially on these war times and cyber threats that are coming? Um, step one, I only worry about, I do my best to only think and worry about the things that I can control. Um, that's half the game. If I have no control over it, and there is nothing I can do to change it. There's no point in thinking or fretting or worrying about it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it's, it's something kind of insane. Um, for the rest of it, you know, I have good work, family balance. I try to anyway. 
Um, and you know, I, I really need to go and get more exercise, but I try and I try and go take walks and things like that. Uh, and then I do this realistically though, I'm not doing a good job. Uh, my insomnia has been kicking up recently, so I need to find something else too. Uh, Brian Godfrey, how do you think 14 UK parents feel now, especially when one child allegedly has 14 million Bitcoin? Oh my gosh. If you guys are not familiar with what's going on over the NVIDIA, Microsoft, oh, what else? There's a couple companies in there. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble remembering them all. Um, turns out, though, that the child apparently was on, it, it's a child, they believe it's 17 years old was able to hack these big, big companies. And um, according to UK resources, they identified who the individual was a very long time ago, or not a very long time ago, but they, a while ago. And they've been just keeping tabs on all the work that they've been doing. So they fully expect to, yeah, that's just, unfortunately, that that is childish hubris. Um, it's also a great example of why I am very hesitant to teach somebody how to hack that's under 16 years old. I'm very hesitant. So Rodnet, if you were to hire a penetration tester with no experience, how would you identify if he has enough skills to do the job? I don't care if he's got the skills. I can teach him skills. I care if he hasn't, I care if he has uh, work history that shows that he's been to work on time, accomplished the work roles that he needs to, he's able to work with others, um, you know, and they've got a fire in their belly as well. And so I, what I want to see is I want to see them doing, you know, top 1% on try hack me or hack the box. I want to see, um, you know, EJPT and PTP or OSCP certification. I want to see, um, research reports breaking down the new vulnerabilities or demonstrating them, videos demonstrating them. That's the stuff I want to see. I, I don't I don't like putting people through technical skill interviews um, at all because context is really important when you do a job. Um and it's much more important to understand how a person thinks versus do they like, unless you're going to code for me in Python or Java or something like that, then I don't need to see a snippet of your code unless that's a major part of the day. Right. Um, more so what I would be focused on is I might set them down in the Cali box if that's their preferred choice and ask them to, to you know, do like a major, um, in a very small lab environment, like, Hey, send this over here, or, you know, do a quick probe of the network or blah, 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 blah. Like just to see, make sure they're comfortable on Linux and they're not just bullshitting. Um, a couple things. Um, Dora McGee, in your opinion, what is the best process for pitching new ideas to securing the enterprise, such as disabling MBNS, LMNR to VPs of a company? Sorry for the multi questions. How about we get to that in a bit so we can keep going on this? Um, don't want to just leave everybody sitting and watching the wrong screen. Cool. Excellent. So we're going to, I'm going to hold your question there, Dora McGee, and we're going to take a look at boss of the sock. All right. So. In this, if you're not familiar with CTF events, this is a form of CTF, as in capture the flag. The way these work is you go and you answer a question by finding a string element relevant to what's going on. Tonight, we're going to focus on the easier ones because you guys will be able to follow along and play along too. I'm also going to show you um, introductory threat hunting techniques as well. So... With that, when we come to Boss of the Sock and we're talking at Scenarios website defacement, right? Um, if you read through all of this, right, the website, I'm really not Batman.com, hosting on Wayne Enterprise, IP space has been compromised, group has multiple objectives. 
but the key aspect of their modus operandi is to face websites, blah, 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 blah. Um, and this is Alice's first day. And then there's all this information. Now, I'm really not Batman.com. Oh, by the way, if you guys are like laughing right now, cause I'm saying I'm really not Batman.com, everything else like that. Um, it talks about it in some of the re references and resources. It talks about what the background is. And they basically built an entire business case around the idea of this is Alice's first day as a sock operator on Wayne Enterprises networks in, you know, in the Batman era of DC comics. So it's kind of cool. Um, so Poison Ivy is the group that we're going after, as you can see on the screen right now. With that, not, again, you guys can log in. You can read this yourself. There's also excess information. This is her uh, journal that's involved. Um, there's also an APT group with any, um, any information, things like that. This is a Splunk reference chart. Um, this is a quick startup. Oh, this is an explanation of what the source types are. And we'll get to source types in a second. Uh, okay. If you're unfamiliar with Splunk, this is the Splunk interface. Now, let me try and do this as well. Oh, come on. Well, I did have I did have a demo for you. That, there you go. A diagram to show you guys. And there it goes. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So with this, this is our diagram. I know it's crude. Leave me alone. Um, so this is our firewall where we're going to have some of our logs. And the reason why I pulled up the diagram is to show you that here is going to be the FortiGate. So that's FGT. Here is going to be our web page, which is also known as I, what do they call it? I'm really not Batman.com. All right. So that's our website. That's our FortiGate firewall that goes in front of it. And then we have just, um, we'll call that machine evil because we don't know the infrastructure of the attacker yet. But I will start, when I'm doing my notes, I will literally like draw a line across the middle of the page and go what I know about the attacker, what I know about our systems that were involved. And I'll start, like my notebooks look a, a little, um, oh, what's it called? A little rain man with the flying numbers and stuff all around. It's, it's kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah. So I have that for reference and we'll keep filling that little attack map out, if you will. With that, we're going to start here. If you're unfamiliar with the way Splunk searches go, you use two qualifiers off the top. And by the way, this is called SPL Splunk processing language. So you start with what's called an index which is a grouping of records. Now, a gr uh, group of records just means the actual database itself, and you can have mo a multitude of in indexes. Realistically, an index can also be clustered together of a couple different databases and physical servers. So just because you have one index by name doesn't necessarily mean that it is just one server that's standalone. It can be a multitude of servers. You can, like, you can architect this in a a lot of different ways and functions. Um, one way that I've seen indexes grouped by, which worked out pretty well, was the form of data or, again, the collection point. So in that, let's bounce back over here. So in that, if we have logs that are coming from the FortiGate up here where we have the network level, I would do an index that's just networking and then if I had stuff that was related to 
my security tools or my agents that's sitting on the system, I would call that index security. And then for my assets, the individual like system logs, I would probably call that one like uh, just literally system logs. I mean, I kind of already said the name or syslog. Right. So those are three different indexes I could do. And then you have the second form of I am jumping back, back and forth so fast. Um, then you have the second form called a source type. Now, a source type is very specifically the type of record that is involved and it's stored on whatever index that is. OK, in this, there is a huge just a whole bunch of different source types available I, i'm trying to keep this relatively quick and short and you can dive into them in the uh bot stop source types information material that's available here when you go here it'll tell you and give you a description of windows ta this is the default windows ta for splunk uh, this is all this is what's being utilized and collected here are all the source types that are available uh, which we have registry logs, we have event logs, we, you know, those are all system based. We have FGT, meaning FortiGate, which we have events, traffic, and UTM. Um, ISS for the information server. Uh, DHCP, HCP, so stream usually means PCAP data, so it'll be some form of, of or level of packets of data that is uh, being monitored by the network. Nessus, that's the vulnerability scanner. Suricata, that would be your uh, agent-based, uh, that would be your security agent that's monitoring the network sourcing. So if you have any alerts from your network traffic, it would probably fall under Suricata. Um, couple quick questions. In your opinion, what's the best process? Oh, Jordan McGee, we'll get back to that one. Pull, root, repeat. Do you run Security Onion in a VM, VPS, or bare metal? I've done all three. Uh, tai, Taekwon Gong. Uh, I worry about keeping knowledge up and keeping that fire as I continue to learn hacking when things are hard. How do you keep motivated when things seem too hard to continue? Uh, you got to remember, you know, you got to remember your goals. You have to remember what is on the other side. Personally, I've made it. I'm doing pretty well. Um, have I made it? Have I hit all my goals? No, but I hit a lot of them. And I myself am... Like, that's why I'm doing this right now frequently with you guys is to help get some motivation through you by I am living vicariously through this community um, because I get to teach now. I get to teach what I know, and it's helping with my motivation to stay up to par on my skill sets because I'm doing well and I'm having trouble trying to figure out what my next steps are. So back to what we're talking. All right. So let's go over here. Now, now we're 30 minutes into the stream and I haven't even typed a single sentence in here. Um, let me pull up. Close that. Go here. Wonderful. Pull up my notes. Okay. Now, if again, if you're not familiar with CTFs, this is what they look like whenever you click on the actual question. Oh, chip. I thought that they would uh, remove my question, my aunt previous answers, but they didn't. Um, so in 101, what is the likely IPv4 address for, of someone from the Poison Ivy group scanning? I'm really not Batman.com for web application vulnerabilities. So if they're scanning, that means they're sending packets inbound. That means it's probably going to be a network-based scan. Furthermore, if there is a firewall in front of the website, it's very likely that it's going to block some of those things. Okay. So in that, and keep in mind, I've been working on this um, over on my channel where I mess around and mess up all the information. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm searching for a very specific string. In this case, I'm looking for I'm really not Batman.com. Um, and because it's on FortiGate, FGT is the FortiGate, as I said, for source type. And then I'm using an asterisk intentionally because what that says is I'm not having to specifically say I need underscore UTM records or I need underscore event records or whatever else type of data. 
what I'm saying by utilizing asterisks is I'm saying I want anything that comes out of the Florida gate, which in total includes three separate source types. I'm saying I don't care where in the record. I just want the string. I'm really not Batman to pop up by itself. Oh, and I need to adjust for some reason it has all time. It shouldn't have done that. Um, you really do want to make sure that you're hitting the appropriate. Um, and there's a lot we can get into on this. But you need the appropriate time date stamps to keep the um, cycles, the search cycles down. And this data is basically all happened in the month of March of 2016. Okay, so we're going to apply that, apply that. Uh, we're going to go verbose mode and we're going to go search. Okay, now it's running a search. And as you can see that August 10th, there were 13 thousand events 13,918 events um jordan mcgee random question what is your favorite whiskey of choice drink it's a monkey shoulder myself or starting for messy ppt um i am a huge fan of woodford reserve with um basil hayden as a secondary runner-up to that uh jefferson's pretty decent as well and i mean my absolute favorite is Blanton's, but it's also about 140 a bottle, so I tend not to get that hardly ever. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, w Woodford Reserve is definitely my go-to bourbon, almost on a weekly, bi-weekly basis whenever I grab a bottle. Um, so here we see. I'm really not Batman now, just so that way you guys can get some hands on and see what it looks like whenever you have an event. This is how things get returned to you as far as an events, at least the way that I have it in a listing format. You can also go table format, which it tries to pull everything out. I hate that. It cuts away. There's too much white space. Let's go raw. Or oh, I'm sorry. Let's go list. It gives you your timestamp. It tells you everything. Now, it's kind of hard to see this and it's intentional because it's word wrapped. What you can do is when you click here, everything comes into a beautiful little by um, into what we call normalized or there is a word that I'm forgetting again, but uh, Joomla, nice. Um, but basically parsed, this is all parsed, what we would call parsed out of meaning that all of the individual fields, these are fields that have data within them, have been separated when it was indexed, okay? What's really nice about this stuff is when you see that, by the way, source IP is 40814842. What is this uh, host name? URL belongs to an allowed category and policy. Um, pass through, What's what was the message? Okay, it, it has everything here, but it doesn't say anything. It says notice, but it doesn't actually give a notice of what happened. Okay, whatever. Um, point being is what we are looking for, though, is right up at the top, action allowed. Because they were doing vulnerability scans, the action will likely be what we call blocked. Now I'm going to use, we can either say this two way, we can either say action equals blocked, or we can do action does not equal and then say allowed. But the problem is that there's more actions than allowed and blocked. There's also passive, there's whatever else. So you want to try and be as specific as possible. In this case, I know that we want it to be blocked. Cool. Wonderful. Now we have 442 events. And in this case, if we looked at the action that was blocked, the attack came from Acunix web vulnerability scanner. Um, destination IP 192.168.250.70. So we could actually take that run over to our chart and plug that in as I'm not Batman.com to let people know. 
Uh, come on. Looks like that it basically just recognized that this was a scanner. Um, yeah, vendor type, it was a signature. It recognized that it was a scanner and it was a detected and it was a whatever. So odds are this source IP address right here, where I just saw it, it'd be S would be down here. Source IP address here. We're gonna take this back over here. And what's my answer for number one, the 50 points we're gonna submit. Correct, boom. We got 50 points from that. Yay, round of applause. All right, what do we have next? Next, what company? Close this, that's 101. That's 102. What company created the web vulnerability scanner used by Poison Ivy? Type the company name. We just said it. It's right here. Acunetics. So we can literally just go... Uh, A C U N E takes. Oh, I already had it in there. Whatever. Submit. Boom. Okay. We can get that from the same record. Another 50 pointer. What content management system is I'm really Batman.com in? And if we look at this as well. I believe it was actually our previous one right at the top i kind of called it out file path joomla images i'm not batman.com which would suggest that joomla is our answer now wonderful now one of the way one of the uh, ways you can also do that if you're very specific let's take a look at a different source type so in this we're going to break up the source type and we are going to go uh, stream uh, it's right here cool stream HTTP um, I'm really not Batman we're going to take a look at that. As you can tell, it takes a little bit. So now we have 22,000 events in this particular stream. Um, source, head, title. I'm really not batman.com slash Joomla index, which is the location. Uh, one of the things you can also look for is called... Here it is, URI or URI path. So in this, why don't we do, we can just do uh, stats count by uh, URI, let's try that. So many Joomla's. Yep. And then you get all this other random stuff, but that's another method of doing the same thing. There's some, because you can, you have such raw control over the data. This is obviously, this is basically like Excel on, you know, on drugs. It is kind of insane on steroids. It's, it's beefy. It's juiced. It's, you can find individualized records. You can port it over. There's also a whole use of graphic interfacing here too, that we're not talking about. So you have a lot of options. Uh, visualization is the one, but yeah, even even just clicking on visualization, it gave me a pie chart of the information and just says other. And then here's the count for everything else. It looks like Joom, slash Joomla administrator, Joomla index and Joomla index.php. Um, so let's go back to events. Wonderful. So we answered Joomla here. Um, in this, we are going to go down to, these are 250, the base points are down here. So 250, uh, 250, 500, these points values are more difficult. 
There's no real way to get the direct answer from what we know as of right now. And we have to build a case. So in this, so this is why I'm going to jump over to the, sorry, I just realized I was not screen sharing. So what we're seeing here is that we just answered 50, 50, um, base points are 250 for here, 250 and 500. So we're going to stick to the fifties because those are the very easy style. Give me's, um, just to keep things simple. And we'll kind of build on this as we get more and more progressive in all, what I'm teaching you guys about threat hunting, um, building the investigation next week, we'll try and hit up some of the 102.50s to where we take the information that we learned this week and we drive it into the information for next week. Okay. Um, what IPv4 address is likely attempting a brute fort password against? I'm really not bad. Oh, um, actually we can put in, so we think it is what we had said previously, right? That would make the most likely answer we had put in but it's incorrect and that's fine. What we're going to do instead is we're going to go back to the 40 gate firewalls because those are dealing with the network logs and we want to take a look at those. So in that case, source type FGT. And we're going to take a look again for I'm really not Batman. All right, wonderful. I'm really not Batman.com. All right. And previously, we knew that uh, the actions that we were doing were we were looking for block to find the vulnerability scanner. Realistically, though, we can take a look at all addressing that and from the source type. And the way we're going to take a look at that is go stats count by uh, source IP. If you're unfamiliar with source IP, it is. You look here. So source IP is, in this case, it's the one that we're familiar with, but it means that where the traffic is sourcing or originating from, and then the destination, because you are you have directional queries within the packet data. In this case, because a firewall has a web side versus an internal side. Uh, it will be able to say that it's coming from sourcing away from me, coming in and going to this destination, usually on your own net, right? Um, with that, a lot of these terminologies that are here that are coming through, they are related to what we call the uh, common informational model or the CIM. It's a Splunk term and it's a standard, it's a standardization method of naming these field types so that way you don't have you know src ip src underscore ip s you know uh s o u r c e ip and then underscore ip all four of those will be the same mean the exact same thing right but it makes it difficult to work in a multitude of data types if you constantly have something named differently than everything else. So in that, you wanna make sure that it is part of the same information model or standardization of structure in the information. With that, let's go ahead and count by source IP. And you'll see we only have two of them. So we have this 23, 22, 63, 1, 4. We can click on that and we can view the event specifically related to that. Um, another thing we can do is we can take that IP address. We can remove the FortiGate requirement and just see what it's been doing in and out of everything that's in, within our enterprise environment. Um, I'm going to click show fields here, pop it out. We only have one source type. It looks like it's only FortiGate. Okay. Um, this is a summary of what type of data is available from, so we have event type, we have, uh, FortiGate, FortiGate, UTM and web filter.
All right, not not much else to that. Um, but we can just try it out real quick. The ways that you would confirm, what you'd want to confirm with is if you take that, oh, you know what? I bet you here's the issue because I have source IP here. That's why we're not seeing it. We should see this in other log forms. Yep, 5,300 events. Yep, there's the other log forms. Uh-huh. Now we see different source types. So we have stream HTTP. We have Suricata as well. So let's take a look at Suricata being that that's our event manager for our security event manager for um, uh, for the networking data. We have event types. File info, HTTP are the two event types. Um, I'm seeing if there's anything important. Looks like we had the communication back and forth between this IP and that IP. And you know, it looked like it's going to administ Joomla administrator index.php. If it's going to index.php, a lot of times it's trying to log in. There you go. And see the difference that I said, source underscore IP. So it looks like it doesn't quite fit into the common information model, but it's all right. So we'll take this, control copy. Put that in right here. Submit. Yes, yeah, correct. As you can see, though these are both 50 points, you have 59 here versus uh, 71 up here. Well, what's the difference? You get an additional point value uh, based on, so the base value was only 50. Then you get an additional point value based on how much time has elapsed. Because I am, because we are, you know, it starts at a four hour mark. Because it starts at a four hour mark and it's been counting down because I did a lot of prep work on this. Um, we're getting very low scores now. All right, what else we got? Here we go. Oh, this is one's going to be fun. Okay. What is the name of the executable uploaded by Poison Ivy? Please include the file extension. Okay. So... With that, we're talking about what was the name of the executable uploaded. So let's go here and readjust this. So we don't see these fields. We can see everything here. I'm going to remove all of this. And we are going to... I want to see anything that went to I'm really not Batman.com. And I want to do it by, it said, what executable. So let's see what executables did go up. Well, can't make sense of that, can we? Um, this is a post to the index. Get dir contents and send what equals both. Looks a little fishy. <laughs> straight up. Straight up, this is URL injection. But anyway. Um, what else we got? How does Splunk handle data that is being exfiltrated via encrypted tunnel methods? Splunk doesn't handle any of that. So keep in mind that this is it, Splunk is an information... Uh, store, processor, and pres presentation. It does nothing as far as um, information management, information handling. Now, you can trigger via what we call plugins, uh, you can trigger work to occur based on alerts that are fired, based on, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And that goes into automation. But that that's a whole different topic about secure you know, um, maturing security operation centers. Um, it's one of the things I actually technically specialize in. And it's one of the conversations that, the, so what we're reading right now is in this case, so this is stream HTTP. This is just a printout of what came through on the uh, Suricata instance that was monitoring the network traffic. Um, I just saw Suricata down here. Where are you at? 
So this is Sericata IDS in where it said file info. 3791.exe. Wow, we just stumbled onto that. Okay. Uh, 3791.exe. Uh, and the HTTP method was post. I'm really not Batman. Post it here. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, source IP was the IP that we knew was bad. Um, and it was going to index that. But in this, we see Suricata and it's calling out and it's alerting on what information is bad. And that is what it, it handles. Now, we could have configured Suricata to block file uploads, but that's not realistic, right? Um, we can also block file uploads for specific instances or specific ports. And Suricata would be the handler because it handles network data as the event manager to block that type of information on inspection. Um, now, specifically for encrypted and tunneled methods, you can only defend what you can identify, right? So if you want to inspect that information, there are ways and methods of doing that. Um, one way is, and you'll find this in the financial sector, they will do what's called SSL breaking. So the secure state, they will break it at the boundary of the, um, of the company and they will inspect and then repackage it up and resend it over to, you know, wherever else it was going. It is fully legal because you're, you are on the bank's assets, right? So yeah, there's all sorts of stuff there. Um, in this, we have, this is likely the answer, but the other thing too, I want to show you guys is there. So Suricata has that particular event, but one thing that we can also do here is we can go, this is a threat hunting tactic. So threat stats count by, and we are going to say MSG. What that means is that's going to be message. So what message did we receive back? Um, file is infected. URL belongs to an allowed category and policy. Makes things really easy there, right? Files infected, view events. And then we see very clearly that this is all completely infected. Um, what device ID is there? Let's break this all out. So file name is this. Uh, virus attack malware operations. File has EC blah, 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 blah. And it tried to go to the vendor action is monitored. That was intentional. Uh, the virus is 32 SWORT crit. And yeah. So another thing that we can do is we can legitimately take. Oh, buddy. We're going to add that to search temporarily just so I can copy it. I'm going to play off the cuff real quick. Here we go. So with that, come on. With that, if we go to virus total and we put in what that is in uh, SHA-256 hash, we put in the SHA-256 hash and we get, there we go, 59 of 69 security vendors uh, and no sandboxes flag this file as malicious. That's a pretty decent number. Um, and what I would say, suggest is never using these <laughs> ever if... <laughs> um joking but yeah everyone um now what you can go is to the details and you get md5 sha1 all the different properties and i say that because since we know what this is we'll back one second 
By the way, did somebody catch something really interesting in there? Profile, honeypot access. This was an intentional honeypot. So this is one method you can see it being used. Jordan McGee, if the CTF was a real life event, would a WAF been able to prevent this? Well, it depends on what type of inspection that's occurring at the WAF. If you're just talking point to point, uh, are you on a block list type of inspections? Then no, it would not have. If you were doing contextual uh, inspections where you're breaking out the packets or you're doing full reassembly of the packets into files and then detonating the files into, you know, it just depends on everything. What do you have turned on? Right. Um, if very specifically, uh, there's a lot that you can do. So for example, we've, I've used WAFs before that if a file was, if a file was passed when past the WAF, um, it would be collected and detonated. And then the behaviors would be studied within a sandboxed environment detonated meaning that it was automated automatically you know uh automatically interacted with hit you know start executed and you know there was a lot of indicators that would come off of that having said that if the if it is found to be suspicious enough of a file it would send an alert over to those that were, you know, working in IR, instant response or security operations center. And then we would have to go and lock out that computer, grab that file, double check, make sure it was correct. Um, and the reason we have to double check, make sure it's correct is a lot of the uh, quick applications, stuff that's not coming from an actual vendor, uh, they would they would alert. So stuff that was brewed internal in, in house would alert. So Let's take a look at this um, and go back over here and submit this. That was a name. And then we're going to bounce down to the next one. What is the MD5 hash of the executable uploaded? Really interesting that I pulled a virus total, right? And then we have right here the MD5 hash of some of that particular instance. So we're able to knock out a 250 real quick and submit that. Boom, be able to grab that as well. So in that, I've now shown you guys, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting to turn this on. Um, really interesting, I'll show you guys this again. Really interesting that here on this, when we found that SHA-256, we we're able to look it up, we we're able to pull this file out from MD5, put it over here, I put it in here, I hit upload. And we were correct. Um, so, by just simply taking the SHA-256 that came out of message file is infected. It already knew the virus, knew everything in here. And we had the analytical sum, also known as the file hash. Right? So, you can see where, in this, you can see where you start with one and you slowly migrate over based on the information that you know, and you do continuous research of the information as you're going, and you're able to pull up these instances. Um, excellent. Well, you know, I, I think we are getting to that time if you don't mind me saying now please don't drop just yet um let let's not drop just yet and the reason is we have coming up i believe a dj b sec um let me pass the info over to you guys Of course, he's got that bump in. Let me get this over to you guys real quick so you have an option.
there we go okay so we have that option right there available i'm going to be popping into sub chat after this um definitely listening to hanging out with dj b sick over on his channel on twitch and also i want to say guys thank you so much for coming out i really do hope that i was value added and i'm going to answer real quick uh in your opinion was the best process for pitching new ideas to securing the enterprise such as disabling stuff uh to vps of a company what so what now what we've done multiple videos on this but really you need to quickly be able to show you know what is occurring what is the configuration so what why is it a problem now what what do you need to do to do that the less money that needs to be spent the less manpower that needs to be spent the easier it will be to make that change and alteration but you have to make sure that you get the right stakeholders into the meeting so we can talk about it more um if you if you want hit me up on the personal channel hit me up on the discord and guys hey look it's the end of the night really great want to remind you guys that we have um i have my show on mondays that i'm doing now called jack of all trades over on twitch you can join me there on monday nights it is definitely a place for me to be able to drop four letter words and drink and uh, mess around with stuff that isn't always cyber related or whatever else um but we are coming to the end of the night i want to thank my mods for their ongoing work and i want to thank you guys yes you so much for coming to hang out i hope i was value added and you enjoyed yourself please hit exclamation point discord drop some suggestions for improving and join us in sub chat for a continued conversation cheers 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 to you guys um he who goes to bed and goes to bed mellow lives as he ought to and leaves an honest fellow Hey, thanks for watching. I want to thank Neil on the Cyber and Security channel for providing a place to have real conversations with real people. Feel free to throw a like or to follow me on the socials in the description. Please remember to click subscribe, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see other videos, click that stuff that's all over the screen. See you next time.